three, two, one. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Pro Sessions Aikido podcast series. Um, we're still chasing those elephants around and um, catching them one by one. And uh, we have our my good buddies here. Uh, they can say hi. Uh, we'll start with you, Steve. Steve Wasserman, Steel Beach, Beach Cities Aikido. Welcome, everybody. I'm Aaron Bomer with uh, Kinji Khan Dojo. Uh, he has a pretty nice looking backdrop back there. That's a nice dojo right there. Yeah, this, and, is, uh, uh, this is Todaiji Temple. Todaiji Japan? Temple Japan? In Nara, yeah. yes. yes. Very cool. Um, I'm jealous. <laughs> and then this is my blinds back here. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, Eugene Morales from Pro Sessions Aikido in Upland, California. And uh, today's topic is about training. And I really dwelt on this one, um, been circling for quite a while. So we'll just kind of get into it. And uh, I'm going to kind of throw a, a curve here and start off with this first topic, uh, the true focus in training. And what I mean by that is when we train, what is it that we are trying to influence? Now, this might come as a, a, a curveball on you guys. So I'll, I'll just set the stage and then you can um, in, interject and go any way that you want. Um, what I'm leading to is that when we're training or we're trying to learn something, the thing that we're trying to really influence that I submit to you is uh, uh, the connections in our brain, the neuroplasticity uh, idea that um, everything that we do, the habits we get, the muscle memory, everything uh, is the connections in the brain. And if we're trying to, um, if we understand that and we're going and training or we're teaching somebody, um, isn't it seem plausible that we should be doing things that help to influence that the best way that those connections can come together? So I'll leave it with you on that. Uh, Steve, throw you under the bus first, buddy. <laughs> Now you don't have to agree and you know, you can say BS and we can go down some other path and um, let's hear what you say, buddy. <laughs> it's, your, it's your show, I have to agree. <laughs> there we go. I got the mute button right there. <laughs> go for it, buddy. Yeah. Um, you want to establish, you know, a pattern um, of, of teaching in a sense of are your students you need to teach audio, visual, and kinesthetic. Yes. And in order to do that, you have to have an organized manner and way of getting your idea across. And there's different ways of teaching. There's drills. There's um, different IDs. God, I, I don't even know where to start with that. It, it's so open. Um, just repetition. What do you think about, uh, I apologize, what do you think about the concept of looking at what we're doing and realizing that the main place that we're trying to influence is um, the connecting of the patterns. For example, Ikkyo, if we were to look at it, there's all these sort of connections. Right. At the moment, there's connections that are not Ikkyo. And so as we practice, we're doing this, we're trying to break those new uh, uh, synapses, the fire to make the connections yeah, pretty that, small. That, that this, what I mean. You, you yeah. want to do everything in steps. I really believe in that. You want some key words, for example, what would trigger for a student to remember something. For example, ikkyo, you step back, you look like a number one. Second part, you extend your foot out, okay? Two for shoe, little trigger things for students. Remember, three, stand like a tree. And uh, when you pin them, four on the floor. So there's different trigger things you can use, keywords. Um, there's, or simple just, with the count, just do number one for a while, then go on to number two. When they've uh, mastered that, go to number three. Some people don't believe in that kind of teaching. Some people believe in just showing the whole technique and just practice that technique, one, two, three, four, over and over, over again. Um, it depends on your student. Some may not need that, uh, those little keywords of counts. Some pick it up right away. But if you get a visual student in versus an auditory student versus a kinesthetic, those kinesthetic students need you to stand next to them and really show them and they really need keywords. Others are just visual and they see it, but they have to see it from their perspective. Um, you always have to be asking a student, do you understand? Can you can you show me? Can you um, mirror that for me? 
you know, dem can you demonstrate it? So not just assume that someone knows something, but have them demonstrate it back to you. And the way you correct them is uh, something you have to have to measure with that particular student, and you have to be on their level. Mm -hmm. How about you, Aaron? Go ahead, buddy. That's an open-ended question. Yeah, <laughs> just take it whichever path it goes, man. Yeah, you rabbit holes. <laughs> well, I do think there are, as as suggested, we we have there's a, there's a million and one different uh, uh, methods, um, you know, as it as it generally uh as an instructor to uh to break something down into maybe bite-sized pieces um so if i were to what i like to do is to if we're working on something to demonstrate whatever it is show it show it at full speed show it at half speed whatever show it a few times different angles uh give everybody an idea of what you're looking at okay this is the goal um, knowing that the goal is not immediately, uh, more than likely for somebody new, it, 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 they may need a little help with what they see. So they get the, the big picture, you look at the whole thing, you get a high level view, great. Um, when it comes to actually uh, uh, boots on the ground and, and the, the training aspect, um, it's I, one way that I think is 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 fairly beneficial is to break it down into smaller pieces, uh, to work on small, small cross sections or small parts of the overall, um, and to make sure that each of those units are success are are successfully covered, where the student's able to perform these things, and then once they have a basic understanding of you know part one two three four, and then put those things together into the whole again, so they get a view. They get to look at it, a couple different angles. Um, maybe it's broken down into simple, more simple steps. Each of those steps are explored, and then you know you come back around to to you know the, the bigger you know to the to the to the aggregate again. Um, that I mean that's a general like method, um, but I think we can also discuss. You know there are varying methods, right? So. Um, maybe in more traditional, in the traditional sense of Japanese martial arts, or in, uh, say, in Japan. Um, the, the next topic, so let, let's roll into that, if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. The issue is uh, with this concept, looking at traditional uh, training, the pros and cons. So just roll right into that, buddy. Well, I would say uh, what if, if I were to say what, what my observation is with traditional training or the I can't, my observation of what the Japanese way is, and I'm not Japanese, but this is my observation, is that very little information is actually given, okay? So the information is, is provided and it's there for the student to, to come and get. Um, the, 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 the instruction is not, the instruction is, it's a, um, it's, it's more of a, an example. And then the students are trying, they're going to try trial and error over and over and over again. And they may not get uh, much verbal instruction, right? They get trial and error. And eventually what, what, what the teacher is showing, the student eventually through enough repetitions, they, the student learns their own lessons through their own practice versus the lessons being handed to them with a bunch of words and a lecture and put your foot here, turn your toe there, this sort of thing. So it's almost like the uh, the onus is on the student as a master observer. Mm -hmm. You look at what is happening over and over and over again in the, what's being shown, what's being instructed, and for that student to then soak up that information. In contrast to that, maybe on a, a more Western uh, uh, style might be that the student gets a handout, they get some photos, they get some uh, nomenclature with definitions and other things like this. They might get some websites with some links. Um, and, you know, when the instruction starts, they get, you know, a lot of detail coming from the teacher. Do this, do that, try this, make sure you don't do this or that. Um, and so it's a more uh, I would say the Japanese way, in my understanding of it, is, is a more passive transmission of the knowledge. And, and maybe the more the, the on the Western sort of side of it, 
it's it's more of a direct thing. This is black, this is white, this is a straight line between the two and walk that way. And it's like, okay, boom, you do this and you'll be fine. Just do what I'm telling you to do and, and don't don't question it. Just do what I'm telling you to do and eventually you'll you'll get there and hopefully more and perhaps, you know, on the Western method, the, uh, the, the idea might be that if we give you all this information, you might, it might soak in more quickly than if you had to go gather it up yourself through your own observation. Very good. Kind of my ideas. I, I see uh, Steve's like, <laughs> go ahead, Steve, go buddy. You're very good, Aaron. I loved it. Well, Aaron, that, that, that was perfectly put, uh, that, that contrast. Um, with that contrast of the old way of teaching, which I totally agree with, and, and really, in, in, for me, that works best, versus the Western, is how you, you, the, the, in the old way, you have to have dedicated students. You have to have one that's 100% dedicated, will stick in, thick or thin, understanding or not understanding it, that won't get discouraged. Not saying they don't get discouraged, but overall won't. Because in the Western world, we have to feed them constantly to keep them in the dojo, keep the dojo rolling. And I think sometimes we can overfeed. I mean, I'm guilty of that. Um, just, you know, how, where do we draw the line between, you know, you're, you're walking for them, you're, feed, you're, you're eating for them versus letting them, you know, eat at their own pace. But if they're not eating and they're eating really slow at their pace, we kind of kick in there and start feeding them maybe too much. So there's a fine line, which is a whole maybe another discussion on where no, we no, this, is part, this is part of it, yeah. Yeah, of um, you know, let them figure things out on their own versus I really need to help that student. Well, well what's the definition of help and how much you're going to continuously help when they're you're not letting them think on their own? Mm -hmm. So you have to weigh that as instructor. Okay, let them figure that part out. And it's taken me a while where I can see let them get a, let them get a little frustrate if you want to use that word or let them really go back and forth in their mind and contemplate and question you know what we're doing mm -hmm. uh, versus the old way so but but that's a real good point Aaron yeah I like to uh, go down a little bit in that rabbit hole uh, so I want to bring it back to the opening statement about what are we trying to influence right and I, I submit to you that we, we can use these two um, styles as um, uh, test patterns um, I think when you start to wrestle with that concept of, well, you know, how does the brain work? How do we learn what's happening up there? And then you try to take that idea and you transmit it into practical application, like in uh, our situation at Keto, um, this can be a little bit uh, a distance, a big gap. It's hard to catch on to that. But um, one thing is so nice now is because of the internet, we're able to get good knowledge we find experts these are not uh, new questions these are old uh, deep questions that have been um asked and i would share with you um when you go and train your personal training you're wanting to progress yes of course right um how, how can i how can i attack this <laughs> um I submit to you that both styles have good, you know, let's say with traditional, there's pros and cons. I like to interject maybe. First, I'll interject with um, to see if we're on the same page. For us, traditional would mean, okay, I go in the dojo, I bow in, we line up, we bow. Sensei goes up there, the instructor, calls up uke, demonstrates different angles, then claps, break up into groups. We start training, usually one-on-one, -on -one, maybe three to a group. Then all of a sudden, we hear the clap, everybody's down the sensei would then be either choose to say very little or expand upon it clap and everybody gets up and does it again and this is pretty much the scenario i would say is um how it's ran at least in the western i have seen that um in uh japan and everything it seems about to be the same would you agree with that statement oh most most definitely because that's how i learned and that's how i you know, copied. I mirror that form of teaching. Yeah. How about you, Aaron? I, I would say. I mean, yeah. I mean, that 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 is a standard. You know, demonstrate and practice incorrect. Demonstrate, practice. You know, correct. You know, um, I would say that's standard based on my experience. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And you know, other than us going to be in Japan and live there and train a little bit, we we need Sensei Dyer on that one to share <laughs> what she saw. On that. You have to be 
you have to be sensitive, you know, who's in your class? Is it just beginners? Is it intermediate? Is it advanced? So, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. All, all those are the puzzles. But um, what I'm trying to approach it as, first, I'm training. First me, right? When I go into that environment, what am I trying to influence? I'm trying, you know, to... This notion of passive uh, learning is, is good or um, letting the student fight it out themselves and learn. It has merit in it. But I, I submit to you that there is probably a middle ground here. I did a lot of research on other disciplines to see how they attack their learning. From music to bicycling to weightlifting to all these different other disciplines. And there was a natural um, a similarity to them. Usually, it didn't matter if it's a new student to high professional. They always had structure. There was a beginning ground of structure that said, okay, at this right here, we're going to approach it, learning this. And I think this concept that by approaching to this, that we're feeding them, right? This is the idea. Well, they need to learn on their own. I don't know, man. You teach someone, you know, a couple sequences, one, two, three, and you let them go on their own to figure it out a little bit there's a lot of growth there there's a lot of growth so i'm not persuaded at the moment that uh the western culture is going and hand feeding everything and the student isn't able to uh grow naturally and versus the uh, uh other culture of not saying very much and that the student's supposed to find it all out when you look at that and you bring it back well what are we trying to influence we're trying to influence the brain we call it muscle memory, right? So as an instructor or a trainer, don't I want that person to get the get it as quick as possible? I don't know. I don't necessarily think that's the case. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I don't think that speed is the case. I didn't say speed. I said to get it as quick as possible, meaning uh, it doesn't it, have to come fast. It means as quick as they can get those synapses and everything wired. Well, that's what I meant by speed. But the 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 rate of of you know retention of that information or you know what have you. Um, Question: Why wouldn't you want a student? Let's throw that out there to learn as quick as possible. The, just the basic foundation you're trying to build because we know weight under side rhythm timing all that's so going to take it's time. back it's back well and i don't want to sideline our primary conversation but it's it's back to why are we there so if we want to beat somebody up we go maybe we we go we go box right um but if if we're talking in in the terms of i would just like to say this if we're talking in the terms of aikido the art of aikido has a philosophy, okay? And so the philosophy of, of the philosophy of Aikido is side by side with uh, the the physical side of Aikido in the context of martial arts and Aikido, right? So some arts maybe there there's there's not so much of this. You know, we've talked about this in some of our other uh, discussions, right. uh, but the 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 the, the the, the the end result may not necessarily be mastery. The, the goal could and should perhaps be mastery of the physical, but it's the actual, it's the path and the process one takes to get to that, to that um, the process that's followed to find that success. That is the growth of the human being and the person, right? And so when we struggle and, and back to training methodology or whatever, if, if we let somebody, a student, let them fail once or twice, fail meaning uh, it doesn't work out, it feels awkward, it doesn't feel good, it's clunky, it doesn't look right, it doesn't feel right to the student, you know, whatever, um, and let them suffer through working through that problem on their own, okay? Now, once that student has uh, they've, they've experienced that level of maybe it's, uh, mildly, but maybe it's, it's frustration. Maybe it's, it's feelings of, I can't do it right. And, uh, you know, what, what have you mm -hmm. now as, as a teacher, now you have something you can give somebody. Okay. Because before 
if you just hand somebody something, they may or may not appreciate it. But if they struggle through the problem and then they are provided a cleaner solution, then then that to me is 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 part of the growth. And that is part of the 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 the, the personal development which I think is slightly different from the physical manifestations and the physical proficiency of the martial art. I'm just not to talk around in circles, but I just want to make that, make that point. But if you're talking about, you know, uh, how quickly can one master a particular technique? No, not master. I'm talking about, because real quick, and Steve, you'll jump in on this, buddy. Um, 